Welcome to the second episode of Mirror Talk, where we go over different topics with different people. Um, today, we have another special guest. Um, he's also part of the Resident Role Play cast, and I will let him introduce himself. I am Lauren Pacheco. I am the, uh, I guess, assistant producer for the show, as well as a cast member. I played Mr. Er, nope. I played Emil first, and now I am playing Mr. G after Emil's tragic departure from the show as a player character. So, mm -hmm. we're going to ask just a couple fun questions about, mostly about like Emil, just because Mr. G seems to be pretty new. He is... Um, <laughs> Actually, not pr so. It depends. He's new as a player character, but he's been around for a while. Yeah, he has. He has, in fact, been a while yeah, yeah. around in the background for a, for a bit. Um, but maybe more of that might get revealed later. Um, exactly. Exactly. He, n th we <laughs> want to try to go as far away from new spoilers. Yeah. As we uh, can. Most by now, um, most of it has been revealed. All the um, any background information sure. that I I. I any background information that I had had previously that I had wanted to bring up in game came up in the last session we just did, which is uh, uh, pretty thankfully yeah. uh, most of the secrets that I had for Mr. G. S um, there are, uh, there oh, might only be a couple <laughs> more, but that's not Mr. G's secrets. That's Lauren's secrets for the character of Mr. G. But um, great, <laughs> Lauren's keeping secrets. <laughs> Um, okay, so I guess we can actually go into mm -hmm. both. Yeah, feel then. free to. Um, but we're gonna feel start free to ask Emil. about any character that I've uh, run because I'm, I'm I'll, I'll, I'll free <laughs> I'll freely provide any information that you are asking about, provided it doesn't ruin anybody's experience in the game. Right. Yeah. Spoil. Yeah. Great. So, um, first question. Um, since it is the first question, it's going to be. Um, a little bit more geared towards Resident Role Play's mm -hmm. roots, which were that it was supposed to be just you and I at first. It was. <laughs> I know. It was just supposed to be Emil and Arkea. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel the, I guess the overall, maybe the overall story would have changed if it would have just been Emil and Arkea? So Emil was very much designed his entire character um his entire like his build was very much designed around having only two people in the party because i knew you were playing a little girl right uh <laughs> which is i don't know if i knew your uh your class mm -hmm. uh yet i'm not sure i th i think i knew you were going to be a civilian so i was like okay you can't really do too much combat stuff so i'm gonna have to be the combat uh side of the team i also knew that I would host, there would have to be some sort of healer type thing. So I was like, okay, combat medic is exactly what I need. <laughs> so I picked up combat medic so that I, it would be balanced with just two characters, the support character and then like the front tank heal person, which was uh, supposed to be Emil. Right. And had the story just been the two of them, I wanted to delve more into uh, Emil's, because Emil is very lonely. Uh, his all of his backstory revolves around him losing his like a lot of his friends and just kind of dipping into this depression of uh just complete yeah there's loneliness living alone in the middle of nowhere with no neighbors and i wanted to kind of bring in this like this fatherhood arc where he uh, eventually would have had to like okay i have to settle down with and you know, figure out what to do with this girl who's following me around everywhere and i don't <laughs> know what to do with it because i i don't know how to handle human interactions um, I, I don't know what, I don't know exactly how it would have, uh, turned out with the two of them seeing as the character of, um, of Arkea turned out to be something, uh, different than what I expected. But A pain in the ass. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was because you were allowed to be a little bit more of a pain with mm -hmm. more people in the party, because if with just two people in the party, um, you might have had to play a little yeah. bit more, obviously, with interplay between just that one other character. Right. And and so I'll answer you that question, I guess. Um, I I think that I would have probably played Arcade a little bit more reserved if if it would have just been you know two players. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, say with Emil, I probably would have played him a little bit more reserved and a little bit more friendly. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more but friendly. He would have started out uh, much in the same way of just kind of, you know, uh, distant and mm -hmm. cold and just like, I'm just here to, you know, do my job and I'm looking for a friend, all this other stuff, and then eventually would have warmed up and mm -hmm. become a little bit more of a, foggy, a father figure kind of... Um, what, end, what Chauncey ended up being. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that 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 was actually similar to uh, Raph's answer to that question. <laughs> um, so, um, let's let's actually. I'm going to ask you another question uh, geared towards if it would have just been Arkea and Emil. Mm -hmm. Do you think Arkea would have, I guess, died at the hands of Emil? If it would have just been them. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So Emil was, like I said, designed to work with Arkea from the from the ground up. Um, if it was just them, nothing would have. Uh, he would have been a parent and proper, like responsible, like or instilling responsible actions in this child because it's like, yeah, you can't go around doing that kind of stuff. Um, but as uh, as the game went on and with the more people who were involved and the actions Arkea were taking, there was a moment in the early Raccoon City arc when well, yeah, that was in the arc when Arkea ran uh, away for the first time Raccoon City arc, yep she, uh, Emil was like I was still in, in, the, in my mindset trying to play him of like, okay, I'm still gonna try to take care of this uh, child um, but <laughs> Oh man, did that not work out very well? <laughs> um, he so I kind of started taking him on this other route where instead of him wanting to be a father, he was uh, a, a lot more of just like this person needs to be controlled. Uh, she is out of control, and she needs somebody to control her. Not like oh, so she needs a father figure who can teach her good lessons. He mm -hmm. went along yeah. the lines of she needs he, she needs to be controlled because she is going to end up getting somebody hurt or some of this other stuff. That was my. That was the mentality that switched in that moment. And it kind of ramped up from there where it's it went from she needs to be controlled to I need to control her to she is a tool that can help me achieve something that um, I, I his I'm trying to remember exactly what I revealed of his intentions in uh, his uh -huh. uh, house in that episode when the party raided his house. But he definitely saw Arkea as the key to um, something that he could do with all of his, like you know, medical training and all of his um, experience with Umbrella. So he saw Arkea as more of a tool after a long time of being with her. It's like she is no longer mm -hmm. a person, as you read in in his diaries. Like he, like I don't see Arkea as a person anymore. She's now a vessel that has the key to my success. And then that's where that would have. Th that's where that happened but if it was just the <laughs> two of them none of that would have ever happened um he would have become a father and tried to teach her how to be responsible and like okay hey th you know you can't do that this kind of stuff with uh, just like telling people your name yeah. you have to adopt a new name or whatever um because he had he had been under the watchful eye of the government as well he had he had government secrets that he couldn't tell so he was like hey look i know what you're going through i have to do i've had to do this for 30 years let me just show you the ropes real quick that's probably the <laughs> that's probably the direction i would have taken if right if it ended up just being the two okay the two characters so now we're gonna dive a little bit more into i guess meal himself um I guess you've already answered w one of my questions that I was going to ask you, which was, how did you pick your class and <laughs> and Emil's kind of, mm, I guess, yeah. class and, well, there's no class and race, it's just class. <laughs> class and subclass, I yeah, guess. I, um, but you already kind of answered that one. Um, yeah. Yep, I made him entirely uh, to, or the build I intended was to be protective like he was just just protective he was a tank and he was a healer uh there was no if it was just the two of them there was no way he would have let Arkea die 
there's just it, it would have been impossible if it would, be, it would have been over his dead body if Arkea died. So, my I guess since you've already answered that question, um, my next question is going to be: How did you feel, Lauren? You feel in the moment where mm-hmm. me Emil went through with killing Arkea? Well, <laughs> um. It's a bit, it's a bit, uh, I don't want to say it was bittersweet, <laughs> because, uh, it should be just bitter, <laughs> but, uh, I was taking a meal down a path that when, um, I talked to Raph a lot about the kind of stuff that Emil was going through in his head, and Raph started throwing <laughs> some hints at me, just like, oh man, there's some stuff that's going to come up later that cannot be avoided if Emil goes down this path. And I was like, oh no. Uh, it turns out to be that, you know, Emil's best friend mm-hmm. was working with the Manifold and all this stuff. So I kind of was like, oh, if there is, if there's something for Emil going down this path, I'm going to lean into this a, a little bit harder. Um, so I I kind of pushed him to the point where when Arkea did what she did, uh, when she was Oh no no she didn't uh, she didn't she was die <laughs> or she jumped no hold on there's two there's two bits mm-hmm. there's two times when Emil had to do some crazy yep. stuff when you were almost going to give yourself up to the mob off the balcony he yep. jumped out the he jumped off the balcony I was and I was like okay th- this is this is too much you're making Emil do some some <laughs> hardcore like he's cardio and he's not he's not built for this he's a, he's a, a sturdy man he does not like running. Um, so I was like, okay, he has to do this though, because first of all, Arkea would probably be dead and I, uh, Ar- Emil mm-hmm. needs her. So he threw himself out into the line of fire to protect her or rather yeah. to save her for himself. So I was like, okay, like if something like that happens ever right. again, Emil is just <laughs> going to be really mad. Cardio. <laughs> and, and then, and then the, yeah. I think it was the consigliere grabbed you and threw you off the the roof or he jumped off the roof with you, so I was like, oh, come on, not again! Emil is just... He's gotta go! He has to jump off the roof with you! So he jumps off and goes after, and then they start carrying you away. My initial plan was to just chop through all these people and just, like, grab you and bring you back into the house again. But he started carrying you away, so I was like, there's no way I can get nope. to you in time. And then when the dawn showed up, I was like, yeah. one of us is gonna die here. And Emil doesn't want to... His main goal is to make sure that Arkea doesn't want to get into right. the hands of the enemy. So he, I realized, I was like, there's there's nothing that I'm going to be able to do to get you back. So I I have to make him do this. So he went and uh, attempted Which to remove <laughs> Arkea from the equation. Physically hard. It, for me? Yeah. For if yeah, because you were unconscious, which uh, I think Raph yeah. had expressed some uh, regrets about you being unconscious or Arkea being unconscious during the the time of her death because she never got any final words. Which I also, in, in that situation, I would have done it uh, uh, differently. Now, um, I would have, I don't, I would have done something because um, I don't like killing player characters in that way. First of all, I don't like killing player characters. Um, anymore I, yeah. I've done it a couple times now and it feels feels wrong but um, having um, Emil do something that was entirely in his arc um, felt it felt good because I talked to Raph a lot about what would happen if Emil went like full evil it's like okay there are a couple of things if Emil ever dies which is very hard for him to do he's, he's it's, hard for, it's hard to kill this man there are a couple of things that I would accept um, for me to not play a meal anymore, if like if he goes full evil and there's just, somebody gives him an opportunity that he could not turn down, he will take it, and I will relinquish control of this character. Or if um, like, mm-hmm. or if his uh, life's goal is no longer attainable, which is to use Arkea, you know, in the ways that he imagined, he uh, these are like the kinds of things that he would just like cease to yeah. be a player <laughs> character, and I will. I will give him up as an NPC, or he will die narratively, or something like that. I gave Raph the, you know, those are my ultimatum ultimatums. If 
for me to give up a meal. And when that happened, I was kind of like, this this has to happen. It was a good run right. with a meal, but uh, he's got to go. And so uh, when it happened, I, 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 I still feel bad about killing a player character, but I feel... It sucks because I feel mm-hmm. like to get my end of the like to have my end of the bargain bargain fulfilled i had to take something away from someone else which i don't like i would have liked to have to to have had my end of the bargain fulfilled where like you know i had him complete his evil arc as well as giving um you know you some final say at least in what was going to happen with arkea but uh and that it ended up happening the way it happened and there's you know no going back but there's yeah, I just kind of feel sad, but I also feel a little bit happy that Emil got what he wanted. Wait, I technically have a ability now as a medic. Oh, uh, can surgeons revive people? Miracle worker. It's pretty awesome. Oh, snap. You oh, okay. can, what is it? It's you revive, if, if a player is dead, you can, rev- or, a cre- you know, somebody is dead, you can... For no less than one minute, you can revive them to dying state. Oh, yeah. So you can, like, if they are Stabilize, already dead, yeah. you can revert them. You can revert them back into dying. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I know, right? <laughs> Where was that? <laughs> <laughs> Allie was too busy working on a uh, horse ranch. Or not Allie. Uh, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah was too busy working on a horse <laughs> ranch. Yeah. Yeah. She was. Although that wasn't in the game at that point. That's new, yeah. apparently. <laughs> um... But, so, I guess we're learning a little bit about everyone. <laughs> Mine and your characters today. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of the questions are going to be geared towards, I guess, towards Emil and Arkea because, well, Arkea yeah, and Emil that's... were joined at the hip whether they wanted to be or not. <laughs> um, for good or bad purposes. Um, yeah. So, moving back a little bit from the sadness of Arkea's end. Um, do you... During the first break that we had, which was... I don't remember how many years that was. It was pretty long. I, believe. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't remember. That was a long the time Raccoon ago. The City arc. I yeah. forgot how many years were in between. I think it was like three or four. Um, but during that time... Um, did, I guess, did Emil see Arkea as Arkea, or did he see her as, I guess, his tool? And, because um, at that point, she still came and visited Emil, and, yeah. and stuff uh, like he that. He was, he had not yet fully uh, turned evil yet, so he had less, I, I, that was just, not. I, I say turned evil, but like... <laughs> Uh, I don't think his alignment ever was officially evil. Right. Um, but, uh, no, during that time, he was still seeing... Like, he still saw RK as a person. Um, but he, he, it became less of, I need to uh, protect this small child, and more, um, I need to make sure this small child doesn't end up killing herself. <laughs> so this, this was it's, entering... It's a subtle difference. So this was, it's like, like it, it, entering the control phase? It, yes, yeah, subtle difference between like, uh, you know, like I'm going to uh, care for this person, or uh, this person's going to hurt themselves, and I'm going to be responsible for it, and as mm. it can't happen. <laughs> right. So right. he be, it ju- it just went more onto the, yeah, he was just more into the like this person, uh, this little little child is irresponsible, and I need to make sure that they don't die. <laughs> right. Right. Of course. Um. <clears throat> Can I think of another good Emil question? Solely Emil question. Um, I guess I can just ask you this question and it will fill all questions. <laughs> mm. Is there anything else that you would like to share about Emil? Like, get off your chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's see. Uh, so the dude was, the dude, uh, so I'll, I'll start with this, um, in his, l- like, uh, little character profile on the sheet, there's the little section for the character flaws, right? Mm-hmm. 
do you know what Emil's flaw is? Um, mm. or, I kind of want to. I want you to guess. I want to see what you think Emil's fatal flaw is. I think I guessed this before, but I'll I'll say what I what I think. Um, guardian angel complex. <laughs> Basic, basically, that's very close. Um, he's ex- he is prideful to the point of like narcissism almost, where he believed himself to be not only the smartest person on in the room, but the smartest person with the most experience. Like he was basically, he thought he was, you know, God's hand on the planet. Oh, and good. he's like, all right, yeah. So that was, uh, that's where a lot of the stuff started coming into where he, he started to think, um, you know, nobody else can have Archaea. Only I can have Archaea. Because if somebody else got her, they wouldn't know what to do with all of her, all of her stuff. I'm the only one who knows how to use her to the best of her ability. And... I see. Yeah. So that was, uh, that's Emil's fatal flaws he was he was prideful and i think that started uh pretty early in the game where he started getting a little bit more selfish in himself and he was like yeah no yeah i'm actually pretty good at this stuff <laughs> like i was a soldier before um me and my crew were the only people that survived because i was there and i saved them and yeah no i i think i was born for this i need to be a soldier again and go back into the field and work on my medical stuff and figure out how to you know bring about this new world order that I have in mind. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so Emil was always just a little bit um I don't want to say insane, but like a little bit a little bit a little bit. <laughs> another another thing that I don't like that I had to uh rather I um I'm still doing it with Mr. G, but I just for some reason I'm playing a lot of really manipulative assholes in <laughs> Resident Roleplay. But um I'm doing it with Mr. G, but I'm trying to do it a little bit more tastefully. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Emil was super manipulative. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, There was a lot of stuff that I I did with all the characters that I was trying to, like, uh, you know, control all of them. And, and like, there's a lot of stuff I did with Katara specifically that we saw in the latest episode, or not the latest episode, but the one where uh, Scorpion was revealing that like, yeah, we have all this information on you. We're yeah. going to release it to the press about all this stuff. Emil, I had to work hard to get that kind of information out of, uh, Katara and like set her up. And I kind of feel bad because I was like, I know that this is going to come up in yeah. the future where uh, Emil is going to have to, you know, make this switch from nice guardian angel to corporate overlord. And, I needed a backup. So I, or I, I don't think, you know, everybody in the party is going to agree with me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start compiling blackmail on all the people on the party. And I succeeded. Everybody, like, yeah. I don't know if it's just um, the players trusting me as a player and just being like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll roleplay with you and do all this stuff. And, uh, or, if, or, or, or I don't know, you know, what was going through their heads when I was... Um, asking them to do some pretty shady stuff but i ended up getting a lot of blackmail on pretty much everybody i mean i guess the only person that emil technically didn't get blackmail on is sarah yeah because she wasn't around yet although you technically do have blackmail he does have blackmail on sarah because he has blackmail on kevin uh, that's, that's kind of true yeah like the whole <laughs> their their family i guess or whatever yeah a little bit so but and there's nobody on the face of the planet that Sarah cares more about than <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah. I should not be telling you this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Um like you you're playing your I think you're playing Sarah. Well, when you first brought in Sarah, I didn't know what was what the deal was when she <laughs> appeared in the in the mansion. I was like Hi. I don't know what this character's deal is. Um but as we're now moving forward and now that Kevin's here, I'm starting to see the the character dynamic a little bit better like yeah. how she's intended to be and yeah i think it's really i think it's really cool <laughs> oh well awesome <laughs> we're learning things yay um yeah i unfortunately i don't i don't unless i can find somebody to do it i i don't have a interview plan for myself <laughs> 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 so i don't i don't get to talk that, about 
you know, Sarah and RK very often. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was thinking about maybe you. getting... What's that? Have somebody interview you? Yeah, exactly. Because me and Rav talked about the same thing. He's like, that'd be really interesting to see <laughs> you ask and and receive the questions. <laughs> <laughs> or answer the yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I could just have, like, a video or, or a pod, like an episode where I just talk about she- them. But yeah, just talk about it. Just whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> Which is basically what we're doing right now. Um, a little bit. A little bit. Um, actually, I did think of another question while you were talking while we were talking about. Um, oh, okay. Kevin and stuff. Mm-hmm. What was Emil's main motive with employing Kevin? To make sure that Arkea would be willing to stay at the facility. Oh. Um, Black that was, <laughs> yeah, no, it was his, his, everything that he did was emotional blackmail. <laughs> and, um, his big thing was saying, oh, Kevin is, uh, there was, uh, RP that me and Kevin did, or, you know, me and Troy, yeah. Kevin's player, uh, did over text. And I think you popped into that one for a little bit I did. where, um, Kevin wanted to go over to Emil's house and say, Hey, I want to get your permission to, uh, date. Arkea right. and Emil was like, "Interesting. <laughs> Arkea is gonna get attached to somebody who is an engineer, which I need to build my facility. <gasps> this is perfect. Sure, absolutely, <laughs> you can date my. Absolutely, you can date that woman. <laughs> um, as long, but you know, as long as mm. I can make uh, this offer completely unrelated to help you build my facility. Completely, completely unrelated. <laughs> Keyword. And so yeah, so he was like, yeah, I'll I'll give you a job. You can date her, and with the goal of." Once he started his work on studying Archaea, mm-hmm. having Kevin physically at the facility would give Archaea less incentive to leave. Exactly. Um, I al- I also uh, just my own little note here. I guess um, I also believe that I guess Kevin would have stayed because he wanted to fix Archaea. So. Mm-hmm. I guess it all would have worked out for Emil just fine if yeah if RK yep. was still locked. <laughs> Unfortunately, she may or may not be in the hands of another <laughs> another bad people, other bad people. English. Yep. Lethal. Well, <laughs> but Emil is uh, he's gotten what he wanted though. He has. Pretty much unlimited resources to do what he needs and access to Arkea's like biology. True, very true. Because he was always like I, I believe in like in the beginning arcs, Emil was like the doctor <laughs> of the group. Like I'm gonna write down everything. I'm going, you know, yeah, and everything. I think I like him yeah. A lot. <laughs> I like uh, in the last episode with that big like role play we did in the car oh, between yeah. all the characters. That was really good. Um, Katara brought that up where he, she she was like, "Yeah, you know, Emil helped me get to where I was well, today." And I was like, "That's that's really true because you're the chemist and I was the doctor," and that was pretty much like the you know that was the dynamic duo of science yeah. nerds. Yeah, they were literally. <laughs> It was Katara and Emil against <laughs> against the world for a while. And yeah, they were just like doing science together and figuring stuff out. It was great. All along, Emil was like, hmm, can you use this? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and Emil was grooming her to get her eventually to be able to basically go back to umbrella standard of research. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to... Of just like human trials and... Yeah. Uh, experimenting on little kids that's just literally he was willing to do all that yep <laughs> you 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 had a little kid <laughs> that, yep. that you could have experienced uh, she she grew up i think she was 20 by the time <laughs> that physically happened. 20 yeah i don't remember uh, physically how, 20 something like that uh, i can't remember how, how that all worked i've tried to put that out of my mind <laughs> <laughs> um just because sometimes it's it's sad to think about mm. <laughs> um I'll, I'll tell you the exact same thing I told Raph, um, that you, let's hear your thoughts on this. I, like, because we were talking about her death, 
if you look at how I played Arkea, you would never think in a million years that she was important to me. <laughs> she was. No, I um, think it was very. I think it was very clear that she was important to you, but the, I, th I think it was a little bit of like she was like almost too important. Possible. I don't know if that makes any sense. No. Like there's a little <laughs> bit of. Um, I don't know. I had this feeling that you were a little bit too involved in the character, and, and so there was some. I'm not gonna like go into a full psychoanalysis. Yeah, right. Of, of course not. Uh, you playing a role play character, <laughs> but that was the thing that I got was you were a, you were a, probably really attached to that character, and there was some decisions that were in, or some of the decisions were the results of you being extremely attached. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair enough. Um, and we did actually talk about this last time as well. Well, not us, but me and Raph. Um, we talked about that specific message that you sent me. Um, about, hey, do you want me to back off? And I'm like... There, was two, there were two decisions that were in my brain at the time. And one was Lisa's decision and one was Arkea's decision. <laughs> Hmm. Lisa's was, let's be selfish, let's say, yes, I want you to back off because I want to preserve Arkea. And then mm -hmm. there was this other, th there was Arkea's, which was like, hey, I'm fine going out like this. Because I don't want to end up in their hands. Mm. And that was her whole thing say about saying that, um, you know, before that happened, which was, if... I get captured, kill me. <laughs> yeah, um, it would have been a fate worse than death. It still might be <laughs> for the uh, world. You're dead now, and it still <laughs> might be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I I won't I won't forget Arkea for sure, but completely. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be hard to forget a character like that. Yeah definitely <laughs> definitely hard um but i mean i had I've, i'm having a lot of fun running <clears throat> running sarah and i think i think i found her <laughs> mm -hmm. no yeah like, you, you said that at one point where it's like oh yeah with i had this uh oh dude that amazing role play with you and doc, doc yeah uh, with you and peanut that yeah. was it was so good. I was just like sitting in the back of, uh, like sitting here in the, my seat, just going like, "This is, I w I could pay money to watch this right now. This is amazing." Yeah. No. Like that. That moment, I walked into that room. Well, the minute Sarah walked into that room to talk to Chauncey, that was the mm -hmm. minute I knew I found Sarah. Yeah. That was. Oh, oh so good. It was so good. And I'm like, th thinking back now to last night there there was a possibility that i wanted to do something yesterday when we were sitting in sitting in the vehicle but mm -hmm. i was way too distracted by something else unfortunately. there's something else happening oh there, something else was happening and uh -huh. i was distracted i'm like ah because when when mr when mr g and kevin were talking about the whole <laughs> marriage thing where, yeah, and he's like, I would have had to come to your house and. <laughs> it is true. Trash um, it and throw things around. <laughs> it's true. Uh, that's like that is something that Raf told me. Is like, oh yeah. By the way, here's something that Mr. G would know. Like when I first started <laughs> playing, I'm like, here's something that Mr. G would know. You remember that kid Robert who stopped talking to Emil? Yeah, you, you came to his house and <laughs> like beat the shit out of his parents. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh, good. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, this guy has had, co uh, like, co uh, connections with the, <laughs> what was it, the Irish mob? I He has connections with uh, large gangs, small gangs, all sorts of gangs. Ah, jeez. Local gangs. <laughs> so. uh, there's, a, th there's a little bit of everything on him in terms of, like, Man. gangs. <laughs> Hence the hence the ink, um, <laughs> right? Hence the what? Ink, tattoos. Yep. <laughs> um, full of gang tats. Yeah, 
as Sarah learned, I guess, by inciting your t tattoos. <laughs> Um, no, but that, that specific conversation where, um, mm -hmm. yeah. but that was happening. Sarah was like, wait a minute. Did you just threaten my brother? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I did, um, <laughs> jokingly and s seriously go like, uh, no, I'm gonna I might have to like pay you a visit at some point if you, if you ended up, uh, marrying Archaea, which was like government. Property. Like, you know, over oversaw <laughs> yeah. her her personal life was oversaw by the government. If you married her, I would have had to send send you a message. A message. <laughs> that's, that's funny because like I did I did technically threaten him. So yeah. And Bring it up later because I got some stuff that I need to have a se a, a private session. Yeah, you do. Not have session, it. but I wanted yeah. I wanted to have Mister G speak with uh, Sarah, Sarah yeah. about some stuff. Definitely. Which now she's scared. <laughs> <laughs> I think she I, shouldn't be i think i brought that um, up last night like yeah. Yeah, after hearing like oh i'm gonna come to your house and trash your house because you were gonna marry her <laughs> yep uh, i was just like oh no sarah's now scared to like meet him in a dark alley <laughs> oh no you should be if you're if you see okay first of all if you, you wouldn't see you mr g in a dark alley <laughs> but if you do see mr g in a dark alley you're probably already dead <laughs> so you wouldn't see him in a dark alley yeah if he um if you see him there's a good chance of you, of you surviving because uh he doesn't yeah that's not his thing <laughs> gotcha he's more he doesn't uh he, he doesn't kill people to their face he's a spell <laughs> killer <laughs> yeah which is good for him because i think there's actually a ability that you have to sneak mm -hmm. sneak damage oh yeah <laughs> full on so i want to play him more ranged uh like super long ranged because i've i've been trying to make it a, make it a decision that anybody he kills like they have you know no idea that he's coming mm -hmm. um and i keep every assassination attempt that i made have made so far and as uh mr g in the main campaign have all been like up close and personal uh yeah. like assassination attempts and i was like this isn't i don't know why i'm playing him this way this isn't how i designed him there was a i need rifles right <laughs> Which is, isn't there something that we can possibly get that's a rifle? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's apparently some rifle waiting <laughs> for me at, at the this dude's manor that I need to go and steal. I so hope it does not end bloody. <laughs> it's gonna end bloody. Um, I was going in there with a plan to get a virus, and now they want me to get a rifle. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta improvise now. <laughs> now it's, <laughs> now it's war. <laughs> um, it's like, I can, I know what I'm gonna do to get the virus. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what I'm gonna do to get that <laughs> rifle. Um, which are, which virus are we even after right now? Veronica. T. Veronica right. is this guy. And then there's Ouroboros in South Africa, which makes sense. <laughs> yeah. If you follow game lore. <laughs> yep. I don't know where T. Veronica started. Um. Uh, I think that was one of the earlier viruses, like off of the T virus that. It was like Resident Evil Zero or something. I don't know any of those games. No, it was something uh, like that. It was one of those like yeah. earlier games. Well, T Veronica was actually based in the Code Veronica game. <laughs> I guess that would <laughs> make a lot of sense. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember exactly when that game took place, but um, yeah, that was like around the Manor Incident timeline, I think. Yeah, 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 somewhere around that time, yeah, because. Claire that first batch off. of stuff that was that was Claire's game <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um but yeah anyway yeah I, yeah I don't know any of those games b uh, previous to four I pretty much only know four after <laughs> Lauren needs to play the games <laughs> apparently um well I've watched my brother play yeah, all of them yeah um so I've gotten the experience I physically haven't held the controller while oh, okay. the game was playing <laughs> though so but I've watched Raph play all of them oh that's good that's good yeah, in case you guys didn't know, they were th these two are siblings. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I am, I am the uh, sibling of the GM of the show. Yeah, yeah. So I get I get special insider knowledge of stuff because I can just walk up to him and be like, "Yo, what's up with this?" <laughs> he won't tell me, but um, I can I can I can get he some can stuff ask. out of him. <laughs> Doesn't mean he's gonna get it, but he can ask. Um. 
it, it just comes down to me having more opportunity to talk to him about the game. Yeah, yeah, and he expressed that. He's like, mm-hmm. me and Lauren dive into the <laughs> psychology the of <laughs> the game. Because <laughs> um, uh, one of his questions was, um, uh, what, oh, what was it? What was your favorite part about running Aiden or the Beast? Well, a.k.a. the Beast, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he said, well, he just dove into the whole, like, mental state behind that character. And I'm like, oh. And he's like, yeah, I've talked to Lauren about this many times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he revealed some stuff I, like, I didn't even know. <laughs> the beast is fascinating and I can't wait to find out if he's alive <laughs> right <laughs> like I'll, I'll, I'll say this uh, and I've told Raph this many times about Aiden in the beginning I was playing Arkea which was his daughter so yep. Arkea was always on the hunt for you know her parents, her parents. but Lisa <laughs> Lisa was kind of also on the hunt for Aiden because of the whole that was the original, play. Yeah, yeah, that was the original character that you had that happened. interacted with. And I wanted, I was like, I need to know how Aiden turned out. <laughs> like, I need to know this information. I need to know how the love of his life's death changed him, you know? I mean... Oh, I, he became so dark. It's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was, I was like, no. And I, I want to I wanna tell you this, because I've told Raph this before. When we were invested... Well, when you guys... We're investigating the university shooting. Mm-hmm. Lisa knew that was Aiden. Lisa had to keep really? that a secret. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I had to. Well, good job keeping that yeah. a secret because that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no idea. Because I, uh, after we found out in the lab, the laboratory, um, the video that we saw of Aiden shooting. What was his name? I don't know, some scientist some guy. Some scientist guy. <laughs> um, doctor somebody. Um, we, I, I was like, I messaged Raph after that episode, and I'm like, first of all, I regret letting Arkea go. Because <laughs> I wasn't playing Arkea at the time, I was playing Allie at the uh-huh. time. And I'm like, first of all, I regret, <laughs> um, I regret letting Arkea go. And then, mm-hmm. I'm like, Raph, I want to let you in on a little secret. <laughs> From the very beginning, I knew this was Aiden, and he's like, "How?" <laughs> and I'm like, I, I pieced it together. <laughs> it's like I figured. I, fi- yeah, I figured. I was, I was so convinced it was like, uh, what was his name? Not Grayson. No. Uh, uh, Gr- Grimson. Grimson. Yeah. I was so convinced so it was Grimson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like. And I was sitting there, Lisa was sitting there going, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, you didn't just introduce Aiden that soon. Um, but it was, it was interesting for me to have to battle that with Arkea. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm like, well, Arkea doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Lisa knows that, but Arkea doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I also know that it made sense that my, th- like, I had the theory it was Aiden, right? Uh, uh-huh. And it made sense, to me at least, because Aiden had left the Raccoon Forest just three to four days before that. Mm. So, I'm like, eh. Yeah, because you knew, you knew where he was at right. the time. Right, <laughs> I knew. Sort of. I don't know exactly what all happened after yeah. he left Yuko but in the woods. You, but, but you knew he was still in town. Yeah, yeah. So, I was like, okay, well rip on me (laughs) but it was okay i'm I'm glad that we we got got that out of the way that that trilogy may or may not have ended (laughs) the samson trilogy actually speaking of whether or not we do or do not know that Aiden is alive. When Aiden was leaving, or rather, when he stayed behind uh, at the, yeah. that one facility to, to fight Walker, uh, Walker, I I was so ready to stay there with him. I know you Everyone said else that. was leaving. Yeah. Oh my! I wanted like that could have been a meal's end as well. Yeah, yeah, very well could have been. <laughs> oh, been I wanted to stay back. 
I wanted to stay behind so bad, but everyone's leaving, so I was like, gotta go. Be- uh, like, here's the thing. Emil also had dirt on Aiden. True. Like, I had I had a lot of... Oh, I had plans um, at that point. I think at that point I only had plans. I hadn't set I hadn't set anything in uh-huh. motion yet. But I had I had plans to make sure that Aiden was loyal to Emil when uh, Emil needed him as like the biggest gun he could possibly right. have on his side. <laughs> and well, I think um, because there was a conversation between <clears throat> there were a lo- there were a couple different things that kind of pointed that out because. There was the conversation on the phone when Arkea came to visit Emil when he gave her the diary. What, uh, uh, Wesker's which, diary. Wesker's diary, yeah, right. And, the one that he <laughs> kept from you. Yeah, well, you know, I, as much as I would have wanted Emil to give it to her, I think Emil made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, like... Emil and Emil and Chauncey are both on the same wavelength. They're just like, no. oh no, she's gonna freak out and do something weird. <laughs> do something weird. <laughs> um, and then there was also the, was it Yuko? Yeah, it would have had to been Yuko's service at the church, where, uh, he showed up and Emil, kind of chased him down and gave him, gave him a letter or, a note or something. Um. Um. Yeah, I don't remember. What I don't remember what I said to him at that point. You didn't say anything. You just him. you just kind of slipped like a note into his hand and then left, <laughs> or he left. Something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean there were, there there was a little bit of evidence that you were sh- trying to get him. I guess get him on your side, and yeah, and uh, you know the sad part about it is, is I think Aiden would have been on your side after he killed everybody that was on his list and he didn't have anything else to do um my plan was well, first of all my plan was to just help him kill everybody he needed to kill right. i didn't think walker was going to be the big bad evil guy so i was like oh yeah we're just gonna kill walker and move on with our lives nope um, that's our wesker <laughs> <laughs> nope um so uh my plan probably wouldn't have worked anyways um but my plan was like once he kills everybody on his list and he's got nothing else to do i will give him a reason to fight and I knew exactly what I wanted to do because I had an idea of again using Archaea it's as blackmail. emotional blackmail. Just yeah. like you need to help me and you need to keep me alive and you need to make sure that my company is safe. And if you do so, I can give you your daughter back. And that was basically my whole play was yeah. use him to like do you know like assassination missions mm-hmm. against people that I didn't like. He was just your hired. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, if you can keep my company running and making sure that I have mm-hmm. no competitors, I will give you your daughter back. And it's like, that's pretty much my play to get to get Aiden on my side. But, you know, I don't think he would have killed Walker. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't kill Walker. Walker's still alive yeah. and kicking. Um, so. Now, that battlefield, the, the, the two... The thing that worries me, and the one thing that keeps me clinging on to hope that Aiden is even alive still, is the fact that Raph was like, I need to take a picture of this. Oh, right. Yeah. For when he, when he said, I'm going to make a roll behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. And he's like... And he's like, just so I can prove it. that this is what happened at that time. And that hasn't been brought up again. That's yeah. absolutely true, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm scared to see what that is. I wonder if it's like if it's a like persuasion roll, if it's a freaking attack roll. Well, see the thing that <laughs> I think it is is that because I believe it was a meal that gave him was it a toxic bomb? I or think something? I gave him a steroid. I don't know if I gave him a. St- I gave him something. And yeah, you gave him some. Might have given him a heal or something. It's I don't possible. Remember. I don't remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> Um, the details are blurry. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering if, like, that, the the thing that Emil gave him was that role. I don't know. It's crazy, man. <laughs> but either way, I think he's either dead and in the hands of Walker or he's alive and in the hands of Walker. <laughs> My current theory is that... Um, I like theories. 
he's he's not like I don't know. He's like neither alive nor dead, but um, he might be like a kind of subject because he's got some pretty interesting biology. Emil would have loved to study him. Oh, I bet. <laughs> but <laughs> the uh, he might be like a subject where he's like Limbo. you know not he's not dead, but he's like kept unconscious and just oh, kept as yeah. a study um subject yeah. by the manifold to like breed new soldiers or whatnot so we both um, agree that he's in the hands of the manifold oh he he has absolutely been captured because there's no way he would have ran away from that fight no um he would either would have died in that fight or killed um walker or he would have yeah. he would have either killed walker or been otherwise you know captured or killed or whatever so walker's obviously still alive so he's either captured killed or something else or something else <laughs> I th- and I, th- I think he is, like, kept unconscious or something like that. Like, kept in a coma and used yeah. as a study subject, which I'm hoping is the case, because that means we can save him, and he has really high attack rolls. <laughs> he has really high attack rolls. Uh, how- okay, here's a question, then. How do you think that Aiden is going to react if you guys if, do if find we- him... <laughs> And save him to the fact that his daughter is now dead. If we wake him up and be like, yo, remember that guy who wanted to save your daughter? Yeah, he killed her. <laughs> you, that would be... You will have a one-track war machine. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, and I know where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> I know where he lives. I need, you mean, there, There's a small island in the middle of uh, uh, the Great Lakes in, by Minnesota. A uh, small okay. island base, uh, heavily fortified. Want to go kill it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That would be amazing. And, you know, you and Raph actually have two different <laughs> theories about Aiden. Um, really? Yeah. How does he have a theory? He knows. Well, I mean, okay. From what he's told me, I guess. Because I don't know for sure what what's going on in his brain. But um my theory of what raf told me is different than your your theory on aiden how's that <laughs> nope i, I kind of want to press more but um well well like I in mean, terms of like how of his personality or like of, of what happened on that day most what day the day where he and walker oh went. no 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 i know nothing about that <laughs> Okay. No, that I don't know anything about. It's more. Uh, oh, for what would ha- what would happen yeah, if yeah. he found out that his daughter was killed? Yeah. Uh. Well, first of all, rap. I mean, I guess it's kind of the same, but I think, um, I don't think he would work with anybody else. I think he would just go. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mister G wouldn't care either way. Right. He would just say, "Uh, I know where." the guy lives you can go kill him i got a job to do <laughs> yeah right i got a job to do you go kill him and confirm, confirm let me know how it goes <laughs> yeah when you let done. me know how it goes <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about Body it over lunch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um i think if aiden was to kill a meal it would not it would nowhere near be quick and painless oh absolutely not it would be even worse than the one researcher um who he like mutilated yeah uh nora nora yeah (laughs) where mr g came isn't that where mr g was kind of born in that mission uh yes actually that's true mr g was created for that mission where um chauncey needed to bring back some intel to everybody so raf made a little mission where he would go get the intel and be accompanied by a cia agent which was mr g an early version of mr g that i didn't have a character for i had he was a. Uh, I considered him just like a build. Mm-hmm. There wasn't really any personality that went along with him. There was just like I know he's uh, an assassin and he's very professional, and that was it. That's all I knew. Hmm. And I just went in there with this because I didn't. Uh, uh, Raph has this thing with all of his uh, guest characters where they continue going from when they're created. I never intended to touch that character again. I just wanted to play something different. And now so I was like, I want. We are. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to break. I wanted to make that character just for that mission, so I can do something non-supporty-ish, and just like you know, like have fun with the little character and throw them away later. And then Raph's like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna continue to get XP for this character from this point on." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I don't know why I'm getting XP. I'm never gonna bring this character up again." <laughs> and then Emil, <laughs> oh, Emil's taken yeah, off the chessboard, and, and yeah. Mr. G is 
Put back on. <laughs> yep. As soon as Mr. Uh, as soon as Emil left, I was like, "Well, shoot, I have to make another character." Oh wait, no, I don't have to make another <laughs> character. I have. One. I have a character, and he's leveled. Yeah. <laughs> um. Significantly under leveled, though. I think I was like three levels below everybody when he. Was Welcome introduced. to Arkea's life. <laughs> <laughs> she was always a level. I think it was a level behind. <laughs> she uh. Not even the RP X point. The RP um, <laughs> XP this, could. I help mean, you her missed though. out on a whole lot of yeah. stuff with with her. I think you missed out on an entire boss battle too. Well, no. You missed out on the on. Because I had, uh, when we did the uh, what happened to the others, we actually had a. Oh, you had your own boss, yeah. right? Yeah, I was gonna say you yeah. you missed out on the Artemis, Artemis fight, yeah. um, XP, but you got the I forgot what that thing was called the big bat XP. Uh, yeah. The big <laughs> the big bad XP, yeah, yeah. That that battle was interesting because it was basically Arkea in the middle, Kevin on one side, Scalvo on the other, and it was like touch, yep. touch. You guys can do this. Heal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Arkea was uh, uh, civilian is fun to to play sometimes. Um, civilian <laughs> is based off of the Bard class in D and D, and the Bard class is my favorite <laughs> class. I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. You know what my favorite class is in the irregular D and D? Guess. Uh, that's a. This is a good question. <laughs> um, I'll give you one hint. Is it? Okay. Uh, have you seen the first campaign of um, Critical Role? I have. Is it Druid? No. But it is okay. one of the classes of the characters in that game. Okay. So, uh, I'm just going to start naming them <laughs> off. <They're laughs> okay, is it uh, Vax? Are you a rogue paladin? <laughs> no. Okay, then... I'm not quite sure, because uh, there's a bar close, there, obviously. So I will say that. It's Vax. It's Vax. <laughs> I knew, I know you like yeah. Vax and Vax. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was either the... Actually, uh, Laura Bailey ended up going Ranger... Ranger, yeah. Ranger Rogue, I think. A little bit of Rogue at the Is end. Is it Rogue? Yeah. I think I'm it was. I'm not sure. I think, she, I think she got a little... I don't remember. I don't know too <laughs> much of the last game. Or of the first game. I know more of the, yeah, the, second, the second game. Campaign yeah. that's going on. I'm currently caught up and I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm not caught oh, up no. actually. I'm uh I'm watching all of the recaps to try oh. to get caught up. <laughs> uh, Work's been killing me. I haven't had any time to, to watch Critical Role. It's, it's a sad thing. <laughs> um but yeah, no, Ranger Ranger is one of my favorite. Ranger's a good class. As I like that class. Well too. as Rogue. So I guess a mix <laughs> of Vax and Vax put together. Yeah. And and elf. Not half elf. Elf is my straight favorite. Straight elf, yeah. straight elf ranger with a little bit of rope. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Interesting. Yeah. I guess we've never really played a. Well, I guess I've been in some of the one shot five E games, but. Um, Not too many of them, I think. I'm trying to remember which ones you were a part the of. The only one I was a, I believe the only five E one I was a part of was the one that Raph was running, which was or ran, which was the one with where. Uh, where so uh, where Peanut was a bird, right? <laughs> yeah, he was uh, the Kanku. Yeah, can Kanku. Yeah. yeah, barbarian. I think he. Was, I think it was a barbarian. <laughs> so I think the pun was that he was a barbarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the only one I think I was part of, and I believe I played mm -hmm. a. I, I think that was the Road to Nava Deep. I believe. Yep. You can find yep. that on YouTube at the Pacheco Projects and Productions YouTube yep. channel. And I, both on this one and the next one, I will have both links in the description and cards in the end slates. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, shameless self plug. <laughs> shameless self plug. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's what this is for. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, but going back to, yeah. we got a little bit off yeah, topic a little. Yeah. We're going back to resident roleplay. Yeah. <laughs> Talking just about RPGs Pavilion. in general at this point. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about how fun civilian was to play. Um, I would want to play a civilian in Resident Roleplay. Rather, um, maybe not in the... Oh, 
depends because if I play with civilian, um, then that means miss. I'm not playing Mr. G, and he's probably one of our more heavy damage dealing yeah. people right now. So uh, I might not play a civilian in the main campaign, but I would want to play a civilian in the in the system because yeah. I like the I like the concept. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Definitely. I I'm running one in the Resident Evil one called uh, ser- system. <laughs> Words are oh. hard. Um, <laughs> and right now my the party consists of a sole survivor, uh, and a soldier, which is law enforcement. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like Chauncey, um, <laughs> and a evolved civilian. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, really? Evolved civilian? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Or civilian evolved. But, so. Yeah. The beginning is civilian, and then, then he became evolved after. So it's. I have a build for a civilian uh-huh. that is civilian evolved. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that, with Sarah at least, um, that I'm going one class. Yeah. Uh, that was my goal with both of these characters was to um, be pure, pure something. Yeah, pure whatever the thing was like a meal. I, um, I made it a, a point to Raph mm-hmm. that at no point would a meal want to be involved. I think I, I, I hope I told them that. I think <laughs> I told them that. Oh jeez. Well, you better. Uh, that might have changed. <laughs> yeah, Just but um, because uh, yeah, I, I, no point. I didn't. I never wanted to. Mm-hmm multi-class with Emil and same thing with G. no 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 no. Uh, I did not say that with Mr. G Mr. G could multi-class I know what I would multi-class him into but that's if yeah. that's if uh, the game the opportunity calls for it. presents itself yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think I will ever I guess multi-class Sarah and that's because I I want to I guess I multi-classed two characters already, which were mm-hmm. Allie and Arkea, which are both A's, by the way. Yep. With Aiden. True. <laughs> Arkea, Aiden, Allie. Um, Albert. <laughs> the whole family screwed up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and I went civilian evolved, and then I went soldier evolved. Which none of her past in the Middle East ever came up again, so, at least not yet, so that's interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, I think I just want to stick one class to gain all the benefits of one class. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's the thing with multi-classing is um, you're you're never as good as you could be if you just went solo, but you have more options to do better stuff. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like if you, if you, yeah, your if your class has some good synergies going on, you can you can have more options. Mm-hmm. But if you just stuck to one, um, you class. would be yeah. technically more powerful at you know, in, or you'd be better suited for the one thing that instead you're doing, of being yeah. okay at the two things. Yeah. Or the three things. And right now, or the four things. I I guess I kind of took a meal spot. <laughs> yeah. The, the the as the medic. Yeah. So. Not quite the combat medic, but we'll get there. Maybe. Well, I'm a surgeon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I. You don't do as much damage as he does, no. but uh, you can heal better than him. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Um. Maybe. We'll see. Well, that's yet to be told. Um. Yeah. <laughs> meal and his. We'll see one. if you start rolling some uh, some meal heals <laughs> and just start rolling ones all over the place, and it's like, all right, yeah. Thanks. Here's. Here's the biggest heal I have. You get 13 points of health. You've done jinxed me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I think it's... Heal. I think it's our curse. <laughs> heals, heals in this game are cursed. Yep. Yep. Maybe it was just a meal. I, I hope so. <laughs> I hope it was a meal. Those a meal heals were just rough. His, his, his heals were even manipulative. <laughs> um... So, did you have any more specific I questions about my characters? I think so. I think we delved deep into both, actually. Um, with you telling... With me asking the question, do you have anything else you'd like to share about Emil? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there's... Um, uh, well, I pretty much have a lot 
uh, that I would want to say about Emil that I shouldn't Should, because yeah. I know that there's Emil is still in play. Right, right. Um, so I guess so far. Oh, yeah, th- like there's some stuff that I um, so just can't say that I told mm-hmm. Raph what his plans were. Yeah, right. It's yeah. like here's what he was going to do. Don't reveal. Which I'm excited to see. Blueprints here, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, actually know how his uh, thing was set up because mm-hmm. it was still in the process of being built by the time I lost right. him. Right. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> yeah. I guess the only person I re- no, because he was put in a wet- witness protection, so no, he probably wouldn't either. Um, well, he would have known what the blueprints would have been, so he could have started building. True. Um, even though he wouldn't have been there for very long, he would know what. The plan what would have been what for the building. was supposed to look. <laughs> yeah, which he kind of mentioned at the last of last ep- the last part of last episode. He's like, "Oh, I have the blueprints." <laughs> well, actually, I think that came up after, that after the game ended. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was in the car. Um, I don't believe that popped up in the car. I if it did, then <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So, and we got a little bit of information on Mr. G. It's kind of hard to, I guess, not because he's new, per se, but because, of, mm-hmm. you know, he's in play. And Well, we don't- again, I'm trying to be a little less secretive because I had a lot of secrets with Emil. Yeah. And I'm trying to be less secretive with my characters because um, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't uh, feel good. I feel like I'm hiding things from the party and I, you know, yeah. uh, I, I'm still manipulative, but there's... yeah. It's 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 less. He's a little bit more um, forthcoming about it. Yeah, he, it you know he's lying to you because that's his job, as opposed to Emil who is using his friendship with the party to, to say to, lies yeah. that they wouldn't fr- the dispute. But uh, Mr. G's job is to lie, yeah. so you guys kind of get yeah. to figure that out. It's like probably shouldn't trust him. <laughs> I'm gonna start inciting but, him every time he talks. <laughs> You should. Um, I've straight up said so many lies. <laughs> because our, uh, Sarah has plus six to insight. Ooh. Yeah. That might be interesting. Um, I mean, your your passive insight is still, I'll just say this, your passive insight is still nowhere no, compared I'm to sure Mr. Not. G's passive deception. I'm sure not. I think at this, I think at this point, actually I have his character sheet up right now because I was just giving him some XP. Um, XP. His passive insight, or his passive deception mm-hmm. is at 20. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Dude's a good liar. I mean... Dude's a real good liar. Dang. Um, well, I mean, at least I might stand a chance better than other people. <laughs> you, I mean, you might be uh, the best chance I think that somebody has of looking or seeing through Mr. G, but... Yeah. See, at first I was playing Sarah as... Um, well, Mr. G has all these secrets, and he works for the government, so finding out anything about him is like finding out anything about, <laughs> you know, about the enemy we're fighting, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why she didn't really look into Mr. G, because she's like, well, finding stuff on him is going to be difficult. If you were to look on your own, um, yeah, good luck. <laughs> but you can always ask him. True. You never know when he's just going to straight up tell you his backstory. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to see what comes of that conversation. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What is your motives? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so is, is there anything you would like to uh, close with, I guess? Um. Well, let's see. Actually, uh, speaking of Mr. G and his... Uh, motives um i actually just uh today released mr g's character playlist oh, yeah. on youtube uh I, I released it on our community dis- community discord as well mm-hmm. as on twitter on my personal twitter um so it, that's available to listen to uh it's very fascinating it may not be what you think i'm excited it would be on this person's playlist <laughs> but i like it I'm <laughs> for many reasons. but other than that um, I don't really have anything else. I'm, I mean, obviously, watch our show on Twitch. Um, you can find it on Twitch to- Twitch dot TV slash P underscore squared. Yep. Saturdays at Every seven. Saturdays at seven. Try to at least. But uh, <laughs> yeah. 
around that time period. <laughs> Give or take. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got. Don't have anything else going on at the moment to plug. Except work. <laughs> work. I'm not going to plug my work. <laughs> Don't like it that much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's work. It's work. They give me money. I give them my time. You you give time. They give money. It's work. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. And then I just uh, I just kind of worry that I don't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time is time. <laughs> it's very important, turns out. It is. And I will say this really quick while we're talking about time. Um, when I was working, like before I wasn't before I was working, um, I was like. I can just do whatever I want whenever I want to do it. Yeah, you know? it's a good feeling. And, <laughs> yeah. like, because, like, I was doing projects with Raph and Lauren and, and a bunch of other people. And I was like, they're like, so, when do you want to do this? When do you want to, you know, <laughs> meet and talk about this? Whenever. Whenever's fine. I'm always free. <laughs> and then I get a job. Yep. And I'm like, well, <laughs> nope, can't do that no more. <laughs> Got a schedule Got now. A sc- actually, I still have a schedule even though I'm not working. Oh. I I actually had a uh, timer come up and say, "Hey, you got an interview with Lauren today at five o'clock." That's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Got to keep a schedule. Yeah, schedules Manage your are time. good. Make schedules, people. <laughs> um, so. Manage your time efficiently. You'll uh, be grateful. You'll be rewarded. By not going crazy. <laughs> so, it's a good reward. Yes. <laughs> Sanity is a good reward. So, while I appreciate, of course, Lauren coming out today and making time to talk to us about Emil and Mr. G. It was fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited and I hope this is nowhere near... The amount of technical nightmare that Raps was at it. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but, yeah. So, I do want to thank you all for listening and watching. Um, I will put this in here uh, now. Um, it will also be on my Twitter that I will link down below. Um, but... I am, this is a podcast series, but I'm also, um, in the beginning, I am putting text that says who the interview is with, and then I am putting each question that comes up if it's spoilery, because some of Raph's got a little teensy bit spoilery. Um, I can imagine. (laughs) But I don't think I have to worry too much about that with Lauren's, um... But so there will be text on the screen, so if you guys want to like skip ahead past spoilers and stuff, that will be there for you. If not, I encourage you just to listen to it in the background of whatever you're doing. Um, but so that's the end of this one. Um, I will see you guys next time. Of course, there will be links to G's playlist. You don't mind if I put the playlist in the description, do you? No, okay. I don't mind. So, Although, while you're at it, you can also put uh, Emil's yeah, playlist in yeah, there, that's too, so that's my next question. more predominantly. <laughs> um, so, there'll be a link and a card for the playlist, uh, the two playlists, their channel, and their Twitch channel. Um, so, please, please come out and, of course, support me with the show, with this show, and then... Of course, support them because they're awesome. <laughs> oh, thank yeah, you. no problem. I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna go listen to uh, uh, Raf's interview once yeah, you release yeah. it because I, I'm curious. Monday tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, so it'll probably be somewhat released with Resident Roleplay. Try to time it. <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah, so go support them. They're awesome people, friendly, amazing. All of the good things. <laughs> and, of course, support me here. And, w- well, I'll see you next time with another Resident Roleplay cast member. 
So again, I want to stress, go support them on their channel as well as come support me. Um, there'll be more interesting stuff coming out. Um, other than just mere talk, um, we're also going to be starting a Beyond Two Souls Let's Play as well as um, some Minecraft machinima details coming up for some stuff. So, yeah. So, again, support me here. Support them on their channel. And I hope you all have a good day. And always remember that in the great words of Jared Padalecki, I am enough and so are you.